We're joined by the former Deputy Prime Minister of Libya, Mustafa Abu Shagur. Uh, Mr. Abu Shagur, thank you so much indeed for your time. In your darkest moments, do you fear that Libya is going to be broken into two different countries? I, I don't believe that will be the case. I think uh, Libya's integrity will be there. I think the Libyan people insisting that their country will not be split into pieces. Unfortunately, this war, which has been raged against Tripoli uh, by this, uh, this person who really want to take over by force, uh, and he has been there for six months, where, of course, he uh, promised his uh, allies like France and the United Arab Emirates that he can do this in only 48 hours. And now he the world starts to realize that there is, it is not possible for him to do that. He will be defeated around it. But unfortunately, the, the harm and destruction and the casualties that he's causing, as a matter of fact, as we speak at this moment, there is uh, shells on some civilian areas in Salahuddin and people just being killed at this moment uh, by this. And all these crimes are taking place in front of the world is watching it and they know who is behind it. They know who is, sub who is supplying uh, this militia, which is attacking Tripoli by weapons and by drones, uh, but the world just sitting, watching, and I'm not sure exactly what they're expecting in the long term to happen. Well, you've already mentioned some countries that are supporting Khalifa Haftar. We could also so, mention Egypt, the United Arab Emirates, to some extent, even the United States, it's been said. But how frustrated are you and what can the government do, the internationally recognized government, to make the rest of the world take some action and to tell everybody to leave Libya alone and not cause chaos that the country can possibly try to make a start and resolve issues on its own? I mean, I mean, clearly that's the ideal situation. If those uh, countries, they will take hands off Libya, but clearly they are not willing to do that. And there is no uh, international uh, community which will be forcing them to, to stop doing it. They have been doing it for the last four years, and it is continuing. Of course, right now we can see some uh, cracking in this, in this alliance, which are supporting Khalifa Haftar. Uh, and, and they finally realize that there is no way that he will be able to take over. Of course, I understand that some of those countries, they would like to rather see a, a dictatorship in Libya instead of having a democratic and free society. Uh, because that fears them. They are afraid of, to see a prosperous, democratic country in Libya. Uh, then, then clearly their uh, rules and their dictatorship can come an end and their people will be awakened up. They can see a far better future uh, for them like the Libyans will have, if that's the case. So unfortunately, we, uh, in Libya, we, clearly we are dealing with all of this. Uh, allies who they are really tried to destroy the country and they have been unfortunately successful in causing a lot of damage to society, to the social fabric, to the, to the infrastructure of the country. And, and, and unfortunately, that is continuing. Uh, of course, the uh, United Nations and uh, uh, some of the countries, especially the, uh, the uh, France and, and, and Russia, and of course, the, mention, the country that they have mentioned, all of them, they are on, on that side because they rather see a dictator instead of seeing a democratic state to deal with, a civil state to deal with. Mr. Abu Shagur, tell us about life for normal people in... But, but the resolve of the Libyan... Yes. Okay, sorry to interrupt you. Tell us about what life is sorry. like for, for normal people in Libya, not necessarily the ones who have been displaced and are right in the centre of the fighting. What it's like, you mentioned about the destruction of infrastructure. Uh, what is it like and how much help does Libya need just to make sure that people can live a decent standard of living right now? I mean, right now, clearly, there is, because of this war, I mean, the, you have the whole city under siege, and, uh, and they're using the uh, Chinese UAE uh, supplied drones to, uh, to attack hospitals, to attack uh, ambulances, to attack civil uh, airports and everything else. So the people are very worried where, where the next uh, shelling will, will take place. And, uh, uh, and, of course, still, if you look inside the Tripoli, life is kind of people have adapted to this uh, state of war, and they are functioning, functioning reasonably. But, of course, it is a, uh, 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 the, the debt can come at any time to anybody.
and, uh, and clearly this is what worries people and make them very, very, very worried and very frustrated and makes all of us very frustrated about the future of the country this way. Mustafa Abu Shagor, we really appreciate it. Thank you so much for speaking to us on the news hour. Mustafa